Good morning, friends. I'm glad that you are joining us for worship wherever you are. Happy New Year. I want to thank Mary Blissmer for sponsoring the radio broadcast this morning. She has done that um, to honor the anniversary of her husband Barry's death. Um, that will be on the 7th this week. So we remember Barry along with her this morning. We have a few people to add to our prayer list. Um, Brandon Terrell, who we have prayed for in the past, um, that is Nick and Linda Frederick's son-in-law, um, has cancer and has just been um, admitted into hospice care. So we pray for Brandon and his family. We also pray for Sheila Stevenson, who will be having surgery this week and for the family and friends of Don Sargent. That is Mark Sargent's uncle who died this week. There isn't much beyond that to announce. We are still uh, kind of getting back up and running after the holidays. Um, so just watch your email and our website um, for more information as we start things up again. But um, Book of Faith does start this week. We will have a little confirmation uh, Zoom meeting on Wednesday, um, but otherwise, not much going on this week. Nice to have a little rest. Um, I want to uh, introduce our video this week um, that is about our monthly missions for this year.
You can, as you can see, we've got some new missions and some old ones this year. I want to thank our community and global missions board um, for reorganizing um, the way that we do monthly missions, um, and we will be exploring them thematically, as you saw this year. So thanks to that board for all of their hard work on that. Will you join me now for the call to worship and confession? You can follow along on your screen. We have come to the house of God. We are here to give praise. We are here for instruction. We are here as God's children. Let us worship. Praise to God. And now let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please take a moment of silence for reflection. Renewing God, you have come into our world to live among us, yet we often lose sight of this and seek to manufacture our own truth. We are afraid to share your word lest others judge or mock us. We ignore your wisdom because it isn't convenient. We allow ourselves to be defeated by despair. Forgive our negligence and breathe new life into our heavy hearts. Amen. God knows our every weakness and still loves us and upholds our life. May your sins be forgiven, your past forgotten, and your hope restored. In the name of our incarnate Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Loving God, you care for us as a parent cares for their children. May we also live your compassion and tend to those who rely upon us for care. For the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. 
We'll now see the children's sermon. Hi friends, welcome to the children's sermon. We are coming to you from my house and I've got my helpers, Ollie and Cece here. <laughs> and we are gonna talk about our story for today, which you can find in your Spark Bible. It's called The Boy at the Temple. Wait. So you can see Mary and Joseph our good old trusty donkey. Maybe that's the same one that Mary rode okay. back to when Jesus was born. But they are on their way to the temple in Jerusalem. They go every year. Okay. Every year for Passover, Mary and Joseph and Jesus and their family go to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. They go to the temple and they make sacrifices and it's just a big tradition. But this year, when Jesus is 12, how old is Ollie? Do we know? 11. He just turned 11. So Jesus is close to your age. Pretty close. So they go to Jerusalem just like normal, but on the way home, Mary and Joseph look around and they can't find Jesus. Uh oh. Where'd he go? Where do you think he went? I don't know. I don't know either. So I they know say exactly where he went because I know this story. <laughs> you know where where he went. <laughs> so they go back to Jerusalem to look for him, and it takes three days. That's four days without Jesus. Four days without Jesus. If I lost you, Cece, for four days, she how would, would I feel? She probably wouldn't be alive. She wouldn't be alive because. Four-year-old, or almost four-year-old, can't take care of herself. But yeah. if I lost you for four days, would you still be alive? Probably, but I Probably. wouldn't be very happy. You wouldn't be very happy, and, and how would your mom feel? Angry. Angry. And very, very scared. And very scared. Mostly scared, but yeah. also angry. Well, then, they find Jesus yeah. here in the temple. He's right where they left him. Ah! And look at him. He's just sitting there calmly talking oh, yeah. to all the teachers Did in the temple answer? and asking questions. And then, guess what? When they find Jesus, they must breathe a big sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. And then Why? Mary gets mad and she says, well. Why would you do that to me, Jesus? I was so worried about you. And then, do you think Jesus runs up and gives his mom a great big hug and says, Oh, I was really worried too. I'm so glad you're here. I mean, that would be what I would do. That would be what I would that, expect. That's not what That is did. not what Jesus says. Jesus says, oh, Mom, why were you even looking for me? Didn't you know that I had to be here in my father's house? Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of attitude from Jesus, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if any of you have ever had any attitude with your I have. grown ups. I have. Yes. More and more attitude every year. Uh -huh. Probably by the time he's 12, it's going to be really bad. <laughs> so but here's something well, to think about. Kids are surprising, yeah. right? Even though I think I know you guys better than anybody else, you yeah. still surprise me. And sometimes those surprises are not good ones, like when you say a swear word or do something that I don't want you to do. <laughs> but sometimes those surprises are good. Like when you make a connection about something or have a really interesting question that I've never thought about before. So sometimes and sometimes interesting questions that you've never thought about before are bad. Sometimes <laughs> they are, that is true. But Jesus is surprising too. Yeah. Because he's a kid. He's a kid in this story and he surprises his mom and dad, in this case not in a good way. But a lot of what Jesus does 
especially when he becomes a grown-up, is surprising in a really good way. He surprises us with how much he loves people. And he surprises us with his power, all the miracles that he can do. He surprises us with the friends. She's reading ahead to John the Baptist. He's kind of a crazy guy to be friends with. How else does Jesus surprise us? Can you think of any other way? With the various miracles. There's a lot of miracles, all of which are surprising. So I wonder if in this new year, we could be more open to being surprised. Being surprised by each other as a family, right? And being surprised by Jesus. And I hope all the surprises that we get in this next year will be good ones. Oh, also. Also. <laughs> what? <laughs> that donkey, um, that donkey that they rode. Yeah. That must be one very strong donkey. You could even call it a chunky donkey. <laughs> oh, God. Chunky, chunky, donkey, donkey, chunky, chunky, okay. donkey, donkey. All right. This is, this is going exactly like it goes when we're actually in worship all together. <laughs> okay. Can we pray? Yeah. Can you show me that you're ready to pray? Yeah. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for your surprises. Even when you surprised your mom and dad by getting lost, we are grateful that you surprised us with all your love and all your miracles. We love you. We love you. Amen. 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 Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs>Each year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When he was 12 years old, they went to Jerusalem according to their custom. After the festival was over, they were returning home, but the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't know it. Supposing that he among, was among their band of travelers, they journeyed on a full day while looking for him among their family and friends. When they didn't find Jesus, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple. He was sitting among the teachers, listening to them, putting questions to them. Everyone who heard him was amazed by his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were shocked. His mother has said, Child, why have you treated us like this? Listen, your father and I have been worried. We've been looking for you. Jesus replied, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary to be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he said to them. Jesus went down to Nazareth with them, and he was obedient to them. His father cherished every word in her heart. When our children are infants, we parents know them better than they know themselves. We anticipate what they need, food, sleep, when they have to use the bathroom. We know what makes them laugh, what makes them grouchy. We know how to comfort them when they're sad. They might argue with us that they don't really have to pee right now or that it's not time for bed, but Grown-ups know best, until they don't. There comes a point when our children become mysterious to us. I can feel the beginnings of it now with Ollie, and he's only 11. But he spends more time by himself now, often with the door to his room closed, literally shutting me out of the life that I have had unrestricted access to thus far. Thankfully, he's not the first preteen that I've parented, so I'm a little better prepared this time around than I was the first time this happened. And I'm trying not to take it personally, which is hard. 
And some days I'm surprised by how much and how quickly he's growing up. Like Mary, the mother of our Lord, I spend a lot of time these days pondering and treasuring those moments in my heart when Ollie is still my little boy. Children are full of surprises. As you saw in the children's sermon, they surprised me then too. And Jesus is no exception to that. Every year, for 12 years, Mary and Joseph have taken their family to the temple. They all knew the ritual, go to the temple, make the pass, or have the Passover meal with the family, make your sacrifices, go home. And traveling in a group, they would have watched each other's children, although Jesus at this point is hardly a child. Just the next year, at 13, he would have undergone the ritual to become a man in the Jewish tradition. And so when they're on their way home from the temple, Mary and Joseph might have wondered where Jesus had gotten to. But just like Sunday mornings here at church, kids wander off. Nobody really worries about it until it's time to go home. And so it's not until the Holy Family starts to settle down for the evening that they realize they're missing their holiest member. Mary and Joseph must have been used to, a little bit, a non-traditional childhood for Jesus. They've been through a lot with him already. But after a full day of not knowing where Jesus is, the panic must have started to rise. And after three days? Can't even imagine. And so they're understandably upset when they finally find Jesus where they never would have expected. Among the scripture studying men back in the temple. And he's asking questions. Mary has her own question. Why have you treated us like this, son? She says. And I imagine that her voice trembled with both anger and tears your father and i have been searching anxiously for you and instead of running eagerly to his mother like a lost child jesus surprises his parents with this answer and you can almost hear the teenager in his voice why were you searching for me didn't you know i had to be here in my father's house that sword which would pierce her own soul, foretold by Simeon in that same temple when Jesus was a baby, has struck Mary on this day, and likely Joseph too. Jesus makes it clear that his father's house is not down in Nazareth, where he's been fed and clothed and cared for for 12 years, but here in the temple, among the teachers and scholars who respect him despite his age. Jesus becomes obedient again, Luke tells us. But we're clued in to more surprises coming because Luke tells us that Mary continues to treasure all of this in her heart. As if she, like me, is enjoying those last moments of Jesus' boyhood because she's had a glimpse of how it might go when he grows up. You and I, of course, have no claim as Jesus' parents. But we churchgoers often handle his surprises about as well as we handle our own children becoming rebellious teenagers. When Jesus says to us, love your enemies, we take it about as seriously as we would take life advice from our own children. Okay, Jesus, we say in our most conciliatory tones, I can see why you'd say that, but you'll understand when you're a grown up why that will never work. And worse, We continue to be surprised by the things that shouldn't surprise people who know Jesus as well as we claim to. We refuse to understand Jesus as political, 
even though the political system of his day experiences the most conflict of anybody with him. And they plot his death because he's such a threat. We continue to run our churches very much like we run a business, even though Jesus tells us parable after parable about the kingdom of heaven turning this world upside down. And maybe worst of all, we continue to believe that anyone who disagrees with us on the things we hold dear must be less of a Jesus follower than we are. When I think about all these ways that we refuse to be surprised by the Jesus who lived and died for us, I start to hear sadness in his reply to his parents instead of the teenage sneer. Didn't you know, he wonders, that I would be here in my father's house? You especially, mom, who heard from the angel that I would be the son of the most high? You, dad, who had your own dream of an angel telling you that I'd be holy? Where else would you expect to find me but here? There's grief in this story, too. And not just for the parents whose little boy has become a mystery to them, but for this blossoming Messiah who sees how little even those who know him best understand who he is meant to be. I wonder if sometimes we give Jesus that same grief by misunderstanding who he is meant to be. And I wonder, too, if 2021, this new year, might be a year in which we become radically open to Jesus surprising us. Maybe this is the year where even we stayed and dependable churchgoers allow Jesus to be a mystery to us. And even better, maybe we admit that we don't understand Jesus fully and admit that out loud to each other. I'd be lying if I told you that all of the surprises that Jesus will bring us will be pleasant ones. Jesus has a way of asking us to do hard things, much like he himself always did the hard thing. But even if it's not pleasant, I can say with confidence that every mystery revealed to us by Jesus will lead to more abundant life. And who doesn't want that for their new year? And so my prayer for this year is that we grown-ups, both in age and in faith, might learn to listen anew this year, both to our own surprising children, as well as to our mysterious Lord. Amen.
Please join me in confessing our common faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. At the end of each petition, I will say, nurturing God, and you can respond, hear our prayer. Precious Jesus, we thank you for surprising us. Surprising us first as a baby born to a virgin in a stable, laid in a manger. Surprising us as a child when you called the temple your father's house and surprising us at every turn with your love, your forgiveness, your grace. Open us to the surprises you have in store for us in the new year. Nurturing God, hear our prayer. You love all creation as your own offspring the works of your hands given life by the breath of your spirit. May we likewise love this created world. Nurturing God, hear our prayer. Comfort all parents who have lost children through abduction, estrangement, or death, and assure them that you have never abandoned them or their loved ones. Tend all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Kurt Halverson, Brenda Getch, Bruce Barklow, Marion Mallory, Sally Johnson, Pete Wachtel, Shirley Davis, Bob Davis, Katie Olson, Signe Lervog, Audrey Simonson, Joanne Eichers, Sheila Stevenson, and Brandon Terrell. We pray also for Pastor Don Roberts, Bonnie, and his caregivers. Nurturing God, hear our prayer. You hold in your arms all who have passed into the next life and sought your eternal reward. Bless them and all whom they have left behind on earth, that we might be assured of our eventual reunion with you in our heavenly home. We pray especially for the family and friends of Don Sargent, Marilyn Barklow, Bob Beckel, Eileen DeLugi, and Carl Sassenberg. Nurturing God, hear our prayer. Our eyes await the fulfillment of your promises and the answer to our prayers. We ask all of this through the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to take a moment to share a sign of peace with those in your household and to reach out with a greeting of peace by phone or internet. As you are finishing up that greeting of peace, I invite you to get your elements ready for communion. And I remind you as we prepare that whatever you have on hand, whatever bread or juice or wine or whatever, uh, Christ will be present through it to you. And so we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may take communion now, um, either offering it to yourself or to those in your household using these words. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, Holy Parent, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.